Welcome to the Jennifer J. Hammond Podcast. Jennifer is a licensed realtor, educator, speaker, and best-selling author. Jennifer's goal is to help you find your yay in every day. Jennifer is grateful for the opportunity to educate, empower, and inspire you with powerful conversations, insights, and new viewpoints. Here's your host, Jennifer J. Hammond. This is Jennifer Hammond. And I'm so excited. As you know, I'm always thrilled to bring amazing guests to you and, and see life from a bunch of different viewpoints. The year 2020, thank goodness it is gone. And now we're into the year 2021 and looking at all sorts of different viewpoints, especially about you know what's happening with this pandemic, but also what's happening with real estate these days. So I have two wonderful guests for you today. I'm excited. I have John Gregg and his brother, Tom Gregg. And first things first, my brother's name is Gregg and my father's name is Tom. <laughs> So first of all, welcome both of you to the show. Thank you. Thank you. We have a sister named you. Jennifer. <laughs> and I was going to say, and John, he told me, you have a sister named Jennifer. So somehow I think there's a whole bunch of synchronicity that, that's going to make this very special interview. So let me go ahead and I'll share a little bit about your backgrounds um, with anyone who's tuning in right now. So Tom Gregg. Tom, he currently he owns and co-operates Medium Rare. And if you've ever been in Washington, D.C., you probably know these restaurants. It's a very well-known and successful restaurant group in the Washington, D.C. area. Tom is also the co-founder and partner of Beyond CEO Coaching, a coaching company that specifically coaches Black CEOs. Tom is 134 on the Inc. 500 list of fastest growing privately held companies and was one of Deloitte's fast 500 fastest growing tech companies for four straight years. Say that fast. Woo, that's a tongue twister. After 10 years and only one capital raise, Tom was able to successfully sell his company to a leading international security software company. And so, Tom, I would love, and so you spent time, you, you've done, you worked all over the world and you've worked in so many different areas, you know, and so one of the first things I wanted to ask Tom is, so after having all of this success, why would you get into the restaurant and real estate, commercial real estate business? It's funny, you know, the rest, the restaurant world is um, something that's on many people's bucket list. You know, people all say, oh, I wish I could have a restaurant. Every time you go to a restaurant, I could do this. This would be my favorite thing. If I had a restaurant, I want to open a Mexican restaurant. I want to open a pizza place. Um, so I was lucky enough, you know, to have that on my bucket list. And I was running a food manufacturing company called Cuisine Solutions, a major food manufacturing company. And after I finished uh, my stint, I moved my par my family to Paris for a year. And uh, during that time, uh, we ate at many fantastic restaurants. And there was one there that we particularly liked. And uh, one of my friends came out to visit and he said, why don't we open a restaurant like this when we get back to the United States? And I jokingly said yes. And when I got back to the U.S., I had nothing else to do. So I ended up opening uh, this restaurant, Medium Rare, around 10 years ago now. And, um, you know, I was lucky enough to have a food manufacturing uh, background. I also represented many of the famous chefs in the United States, a company called Five Leaf. And so I got to learn a lot about the restaurant industry, although I'd never been involved in it directly. And uh, so it was very lucky that I have a great partner um, who has a lot of restaurant background and in my business background together it just seemed to uh, have worked very well for us. Well, and I love that you guys decided to do it and that you followed through with it because like you just said, I think you're you're very smart. I think so many of us have said, oh, I could do, I could have a restaurant. In fact, my father, of course, you know, Tom Hammond has many times said that we should go ahead and have green eggs and Hammond and just have a breakfast restaurant, you know, where we serve all sorts of very funny green eggs and um, ham kind of dishes. So I don't know if that will ever come to fruition. So I, I have to say I'm extremely impressed, not only because I visited your restaurants, but also the fact that you are successful. And I know you mentioned that you're also, you're expanding in a time when many people during a pandemic are actually contracting. That's right? 
That is correct. Yeah, we're very excited about that. The, you know, we think we have a better opportunity now from a real estate perspective than we've had in the last 10 years because the market has been very oversaturated for restaurants in the past. And now uh, with the unfortunate aspect of the pandemic, a lot of restaurants are closing and a lot of retailers are very um, eager to find successful restaurant groups that would like to move into their space. And for us, um, you know, restaurant conversions are a lot safer um, than actually new builds. And um, with the landlords willing to make good deals with us right now, um, we're, we have a plan right now. We're trying to expand to 20 locations in 20 different cities. Um, so we're going to look for the very best location that fits our model all across the United States using a big commercial real estate firm um, and, and picking out the cities by which location. The, the exact locations that we're looking for in each city. Um, so we're very excited. We think this is very opportunistic for us right now. And um, so we're really looking forward to expand, uh, which is what's been very successful in the Washington, D.C. area. So, Tom, I want to come back to you in just a second. I wanted to I want to introduce your brother and ask him a question. But when we come when I come back, when I bounce back after talking to your brother, I want to one of the things I would love for you to do is tell us what you think is the secret to your success in the restaurant industry? Because again, that's an industry that, you know, I don't even have the statistics off the top of my head, but so many of them fail. And during the pandemic, as you've said, and even if you drive all around Washington, DC, Georgetown, Bethesda, it is amazing how many vacant properties there are in the commercial areas and restaurants that have gone out of business. So, so Tom, let's, let's talk about your secret to your success after, let me introduce John really quick. So John, John has over 35 years in the pharmaceutical industry and has his past in startups and has been very successful as well. So, of course, it's very important. I would love to know, first of all, just like what I asked your brother, John, why pharmaceuticals? Why did you decide on that industry? Well, I wanted to be a pharmaceutical CEO since I was a sophomore in college and I was actually able to, to realize my dream. I worked for four of the biggest drug companies, Bristol-Myers Squibb, Johnson & Johnson, Novartis, and finally I was in charge of Pfizer's new products for 10 years, including a whole research program on coronavirus. So I've actually been working on coronavirus drugs for 20 years and had some unique experience there. So when the pandemic arose, I actually called Tom up and I said, be careful because the restaurant industry is gonna be in for a rough ride. And this was back in January of last year before most people realized it. And Tom started to prepare and think about it a little bit earlier than maybe even some other people. Um, but um, I wanted to make a real difference in helping people. And so I've had a lot of emphasis both on uh, infectious disease and cancer, which are uh, terrible diseases. Yeah. My mother died of cancer, speaking of another synchronicity. So I, I definitely have realized that, 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 again, most people who go into pharmaceutical, which I thought might be part of your story, is, is to help. And again, we're all looking for solutions. And that, of course, when we bring you back over to Tom, on um, that what you just what your brother just said about the impact on restaurants um, during the pandemic, you know, I think you may have had a little bit of a heads up, but I don't think anyone could have predicted exactly how Washington, D.C. and, you know, Northern Virginia and Maryland, how it would really impact them. Because, again, for me, it's still startling to to walk through those, you know, areas in Bethesda and Georgetown and Arlington and just see restaurant after restaurant that has gone the way of the dinosaur. What would you say are some of the success points? So, you know, as I said before, we went to your brother. What makes you guys successful even during a pandemic? Well, I think the first is you. You know, we we had a, a good reserve um, financially. You know, to be financially strong to start with is very important. So, a lot of restaurateurs pretty much take the money out as soon as they get it. So, um, having a good reserve in the restaurant made us feel secure when we started, and then a lot of pivoting had to take place. Um, one of the big pivots that everybody took um, had to do with going from a sit-down restaurant concept to a, um, uh, you know, uh, to-go um, delivery type operation. And we pivoted very quickly to to-go and, and um, delivery, um, which was very important. Um, 
And uh, so that was sort of the start. I think every restaurant that didn't pivot very quickly to, to go in and delivery had problems. Then, you know, PR became a big factor and, um, you know, medium rare started right when COVID started with um, feeding the elderly, um, you know, everybody over 70 plus, we said we would deliver a free meal to them. Mm -hmm. And not only was it helpful, but it also brought a lot of um, good public relations to the, to the restaurant. So we ended up doing that not only at the beginning, but we did a big drive during Thanksgiving and again, Christmas meals for the elderly and first responders, et cetera. And in fact, my business partner started a nonprofit called Feed the Fridge. Um, which provides which provides food and refrigerators to young people um, who were getting school uh, lunch program before and no longer are getting fed. So we put refrigerators across around the city now, and we're feeding filling those refrigerators with food from not only our restaurants but other restaurants, and uh, kids can just come and pull that food out when they need it. So that kind of PR has really helped not only a lot of people, but it's helped the restaurant too, in terms of um, people saying, this is a restaurant I want to support and I feel good about this restaurant. Well, I think that's also what I would say is part of the secret of your success is that you are community minded and, and looking at how can we be part of the solution. And I love the fact that you use the word help numerous times is we all, I think what this pandemic has taught us is that we need to find ways to help each other and, and learn to communicate in a way that we've never, I don't even know if we've ever needed to communicate or to help one another as much as we have. Would you agree? I agree with that. Yeah. I mean, the more community, the better. We've, we've been doing something called uh, Turkey Fry every year for around 10 years for free tur people to get their turkeys fried for free. Um, they just bring their turkeys in and we fry them. And this year, because of the pandemic, we partnered with the Washington Nationals because we have a place at Nationals Park also. And so we did our turkey fry at Nationals Park this year so we could distance each other e from each other even more, uh, but still have that sense of community and people can bring in all their turkeys and fry their turkeys uh, mm -hmm. for free. A lot of people, even this year was really hard because a lot of people have never done Thanksgiving, you know, alone before. They're usually with their family. So having to fry your own or cook your own turkey is a brand new thing. So we are very happy to be able to um, add that to the community list this year. Yeah, I think anything we can do to, again, bring us together so that people don't feel so isolated, because I know that's one of the things that we love about restaurants is we love that community atmosphere of bringing a bunch of people together, friends and family right. in a restaurant, and of course, having someone else cook for you. <laughs> right, right. So let's go ahead and let's talk to your brother. These vaccines that are they're rolling out, how do you think that they're going to impact the real estate markets? You know, there is not only the psychological, the mindset side of it, but then there's also, as you probably can um, tell us a little better about, is the medical side of things. What's your opinion on that, John? Well, I, I, I think um, the vaccines are going to be critical for getting us back to normal. Um, the challenge is it's going to take a while to distribute them. And as you probably read, um, people were hoping even before the end of the year, more of the Pfizer and the Moderna vaccines would be distributed. So in the meantime, we have a problem now, which is a new surge of people after the holidays spreading the infection to one another. And so I think the thing that's going to be really key in building business confidence so that people will be comfortable shopping, going out to uh, you know restaurants with in-room, uh, you know, in-house dining rooms and so on is that if you have something which you can give to people as a therapeutic so that if they actually get it before they get the vaccine, they won't have to worry that something really bad will happen to them and they'll end up in the hospital and on a respirator. So I think we need two things and the, and the government is now promoting that. And then the other thing is to get as many people vaccinated as quickly as possible. And if you have those two things, I think consumers will feel comfortable in getting back to normal, knowing that First, if I, you know, when I get the vaccine, I'll be good from then on out. And until then, there's something that can help me if I happen to get or family member if they happen to get sick. Yeah, I think there is a, definitely a level of um, people want to feel safe again. And, and definitely the, it's a, impacted the residential real estate as well as commercial in so many ways. Just like I said about it, it's startling to walk around Washington, D.C. or the desert, different places, and just see how many vacancies there are. But also in the residential side, people feeling comfortable going inside homes or going to open houses. And again, I think that um, 
probably I'm curious on what your thought is, <laughs> John, on is the handshake gone forever? I think it's going to be for a long time gone. It's all going to be, you know, elbow bumps and things like that for a while. Yeah. And, you know, a lot of people after the first uh, SARS in Asia, it became commonplace for people to wear masks. And I remember traveling around thinking how odd it was e even before the COVID-19 pandemic that people were wearing masks all the time. But we may see that as a residual in this country, too, that it will be common for people who are more worried about things to wear masks going forward also. Yeah, absolutely. And Tom, one of the questions that I, I kind of led with and or teased a little bit about in the beginning was when I was reading your bio was the fact that you love helping black CEOs. I know there's got to be a story there. Will you share that? Well, I think, you know, one of the things, you know, I found as being a CEO of companies for over 25 years is the fact that um, it's a very exclusive group um, and we have our own networks and we work, you know, once you're a CEO of a company, it's a lot easier to become a CEO of another company because you're within this exclusive network and there's sort of systematic and uh, issues um, that prevent a lot of black CEOs from getting started and from growing. And, um, and we felt like, um, and it's not, it's not me as a white savior, but a, as a, as a company, right. we felt it's very important that we help um, in particular black CEOs uh, really succeed. So we started a company uh, called beyond CEO coaching. And our goal is for every black CEO who wants a coach gets a coach and all the coaches that we provide have, you know, more than 10 years experience ranging from a $10 million company to billion dollar companies. And so we provide, try to provide the best coaches to those that need a coach and our, our, our mission is every black CEO wants to coach, can get a coach, but every black CEO under a million dollars who has more than five employees um, gets coaching for free. So there's no cost to them. And um, we're, we're having a great time. I mean, there's some great companies out there that need some help that need to, you know, need some of that, um, some of that uh, influence and, and uh, success that um, that we've had that we can impart on them and help them through the networking that they need to succeed as a company. And I agree. I think coaching is one of the, those amazing things that we all need to do. And even as a woman, when I first started to get into real estate investing, you know, as you probably know, in Washington, D.C., it was very much a good old boys club. And they, right. it wasn't always welcome to the table, so to speak. And it's been 20, 25 years now. And I have learned a lot and I have so much fun now coaching others and specifically my niche is I love coaching women in real estate investing because, again, it's such a powerful way to lift people up and, and learn to be successful because real estate, as you just mentioned earlier in the restaurant space, you know, this is a great opportunity. Let's let's see where the rainbows are in this storm. You know, there is a silver lining in every bit of challenge that we come through in life and and but we need coaches we need to find um, other people who can find that positive attitude and continue forward in that way so I know we're just about out of time so I want to make sure uh, Tom how would you like if people wanted to get to know um, to find out more about either your coaching your restaurants what would you like them to where would you like them to go social media website well well, I guess you can, uh, you know, mediumrarerestaurants.com and beyondceocoaching.com. And you can find me personally, I guess, on LinkedIn or maybe have them contact you, Jennifer, and uh, you can forward that on to me. That would be great. I would do that happily. And I'm so grateful. Thank you, Tom, for all. Tom, Greg, I love the fact that you have my, my dad's name and my brother's name and that you have a sister named Jennifer. And of course, John Gregg, I'm so grateful. Thank you so much for all of your passion in helping people. And, and, and again, in this time of confusion, we need to find out, you know, what can we know for sure? And how can we protect ourselves? And how can we be safe? So if people want to find out more about what you're doing and more about your message, John, how can they get a hold of you? So uh, I have a website, uh, J, uh, it's www.ballenbach, B-A-L-I-N-B-A-C.com. And like Tom, I'm also on LinkedIn. We're working on developing um, easy to take drugs as outpatients uh, for COVID-19 so that 
the idea would be that if you you go to a drive through and you're diagnosed, you could be given something immediately rather mm. than waiting till you end up in the hospital. And wow. that's uh, the government's whole uh, emphasis now is moving away from hospital-based things that require IV therapies to something convenient you can take as an outpatient. Yeah. And I think that is the most important. We we heal faster at home than we ever do in hospitals. <laughs> so I, I like that idea. So John and Tom, thank you. Thank you for all that you do. And thank you for being with us today. Thank, thank you, you very much. It is my pleasure. And as I say at every single episode, find a way to make someone else smile. Mm-hmm.